Welcome to question 6 of the 2021 Mathematical Methods Exam 1 for the Northern Hemisphere. In this video we will be looking at the solution for this question. A reminder that this video is in no way endorsed by VCAR. For question 6 we have let A and B be events of a sample space such that the probability of A is 2 thirds, the probability of B given A is 2 fifths, and the probability of B given A complement is equal to 1 divided by 4. For part A, we're asked to find the probability of B. So for a question like this where we have conditional probabilities included, I think it's useful to write down the formula for that so that we can say that the probability of B given A is actually equal to the probability of A intersecting B divided by the probability of the condition, which is A. So therefore, the probability B given A we know is 2 on 5, is equal to the probability of A intersecting B, which we don't know yet, but it is divided by the probability of A, which we do know is 2 over 3. So therefore, we can actually find the probability of A intersecting B is equal to 2 fifths times 2 thirds, which gives 4 on 15. So we just multiply from the line above by the denominator, and we get the probability of A intersecting B is 4 on 15. Next, we'll just do the same thing for the other conditional probability that's given. So interpreting this, we have the probability of B given A complement is equal to, and symbolically it's going to be A complement intersecting B divided by the probability of A complement, which is the condition that's given. So therefore, the probability of B given A complement, we can write down as being a quarter, because that's given to us. And that's going to equal the probability of A complement intersecting B divided by the probability of A complement. So if the probability of A is 2 thirds, then the complement is 1 third. So therefore, we can actually find the probability of A complement intersecting B is going to equal 4 thirds times 1 third, which is 1 on 12. Now, it may not be immediately apparent to you, but these two things added together give the probability of B. And I'll just show why that's the case using a Carnot map. So if we have a Carnot map with A and A complement, B and B complement, then this 4 over 15 here is the probability of A intersecting B. So that would be the 4 on 15 that goes there. And this probability of A complement intersecting B, which is 1 on 12, would go here. And if we add those two things together, we'll actually find the probability of B which is this box just here, which is what we were asked to find the whole time. So therefore, the probability of B is just equal to 4 on 15 plus 1 on 12. And that's going to equal, we can get a common denominator of 60. So 4 on 15 will become 16 on 60, plus 1 on 12 will actually become 5 on 60. That is going to equal 21 on 60, which there's a factor of 3 that goes into both of those. So that can be simplified to 7 on 20. So that is the answer to part A of this question. Part B then asks us to find the probability of A complement union with B complement. And to represent that, I'm actually going to use a Venn diagram for this one. So A complement union with B complement would actually be everything in this Venn diagram, excluding that middle region. So A complement union B complement is going to be everything except the intersection of A and B. So therefore, the probability of A complement union B complement is going to equal 1 minus the probability of A intersecting B, which we'd already found A intersecting B was 4 on 15. So that's going to be 1 minus 4 on 15, which we can find is 11 on 15. So that is going to be the answer to part B of this question. From the examiner's report, we can see that the answer to the first question was 7 on 20, and that a probability table like I showed, or even a Venn diagram, was of most use to students. And for part B, we can see that the answer was 11 on 15, which is the same as what we got.